On this worksheet, we're gonna practice drawing a few different types of monosaccharides. We're not being asked to draw a specific monosaccharide, just a type, for example, an aldotriose. In these names, we're getting two hints about the structure of the molecule. First of all, the prefix aldo or keto is gonna tell us the position of the carbon-oxygen double bond. If we have an aldo, the carbon-oxygen double bond is going to be on the first carbon or carbon number one. And if we have a keto, the carbon-oxygen double bond is gonna be on the second carbon or carbon number two. The other hint that we have in the name is the prefix um, tri and hex, and we maybe see some different ones down here. This refers to the number of carbon atoms in the entire molecule. Tri means that we have three and hex means that we have six. And then the ose at the end is just our suffix for a monosaccharide or any type of sugar. So for the first one, if we have an aldo triose, the tri part is telling us that we have three carbons in this whole entire molecule. The aldo part is telling us that the carbon oxygen double bond is on carbon number number uh, one. Then for the other two carbon atoms in this molecule, they each are going to get one OH. That's just a characteristic of a monosaccharide. Every carbon atom is either part of a carbon oxygen double bond or it has one OH. The other positions on these carbon atoms are just going to be hydrogens like that. And for this, it doesn't matter if we're going to draw the OH group on this side or over here on this side. Like it's saying, there's more than one correct example. We're just specifically being asked to draw a molecule that has three carbons, that has the carbon oxygen double bond on position number one, and that the remaining two carbons in the molecule each have one OH group. Here's our second example. The hexose is telling us that we have a six carbon chain, so let's draw that first. One, two, three, four, five, six. The aldo part is telling us that our carbon oxygen double bond is on carbon number two, or carbon number one. And then all of the other five carbon atoms need to have an OH group, only one. You could draw it on either the left side or right side. You could alternate the position. It's not going to really matter where you draw it. You just need to draw it somewhere. And then we also need to give every one of these carbon atoms enough hydrogens so that they each have a total of four bonds. Here's a keto hexose. That's going to be uh, six carbons. Again, the hex part means that we have six carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six. The keto part means that our carbon oxygen double bond is on the second carbon, carbon number two. Um, we do want to put OH groups on everything else. Doesn't matter if you put it on the left side or the right side, you can put it wherever you want to put it. And then make sure that we have enough hydrogens on all of the rest of the carbon atoms in this molecule. Be careful with carbon number two. It does not need any hydrogens added to it. Here is our next three that we're going to draw. The triose means we have three carbons. Keto means that the double bond is on carbon number two. Give everybody else an OH give all of the carbons as many hydrogens as they need so that they each have three bonds. Although pentose, pent means five, five carbon chain. Aldo means that the double bond is on carbon number one. And then we just wanna put OH groups either on the left side or on the right side. It doesn't matter where we put them. And also make sure that all of these carbon atoms have as many hydrogens as necessary. And then last but not least, we have the keto tetros. Tet means four, one, two, three, four carbon atoms. Keto means the double bond is on carbon number two. All of our other carbons are gonna get OH groups either on the left side or the right side. It's your choice. And draw in the correct number of hydrogen atoms. Now the next thing that we're going to do is practice classifying our aldoses and ketoses as either D or L. So on the next page we have um, five different molecules that we're going to look at and we're gonna classify them as D or L. The D or L classification is based on the second to the last carbon atom in the molecule. So let's just begin by finding that second to the last carbon atom. Uh, this is uh, this is the top, so this is carbon number one right here, and then that would mean that this is our last carbon. We're not looking at the last carbon. We are looking at the second to the last carbon. Again, we're not looking at the last carbon. We're looking at 
the second to the last carbon, second to the last carbon in all of these. The second to the last carbon is the one that actually is going to be dictating this D or L. Once we have found the second to the last carbon, we are going to look at the position of the OH group. If the OH group is on the left side of our drawing, then it is the L version of the monosaccharide. That's super easy to remember, L for left. So when we look at this one, we're focusing on the second to the last carbon, the OH group is on the right side, which means that this is a D because this OH group is on the right side of our drawing. Here's our next one. We're focusing on the second to the last carbon. Our OH group is on the left. This is L because this OH group is on the left. This is pretty straightforward. So here's another L because the OH group is on the left. Uh, and here the OH group is on the right. So this one is going to be a D. And then our last one, the OH group is on the right. So this one is also a D.